Hey lovelies! It is time for Assorted Sundries. All right, so this week uh, I'm going to give you some tips. Uh, I am a thrifty person. Um, cheap. I'm cheap. I am. Uh, I really hate spending money that I don't have, uh, so I don't do that. But I also hate spending a lot of money on something that I could probably get for cheaper kind of deal. Um, but I also understand that sometimes you have to put money out for quality. And that's where I have to fight with myself sometimes. But um, today's tips have to do with clothing. Uh, as in, um, should you put the money out for quality items? Or should you just go ahead and go cheap and hope it lasts? So here's the deal. There are a few quality items that you should definitely spend money on. A few. A really good pair of shoes. And I'm not talking about, oh my God, these heels are so cute. I'm talking about like a pair of boots <laughs> or a pair of loafers or something. Probably black. In my case, it's Mary Jane's. I love Mary Jane. So I have a very good pair of heeled Mary Jane's that... I can wear casual or I can wear with the dressy dress and um, black tights and it still works. Uh, they're comfortable, you know, they don't hurt my feet, they look nice, and they were more expensive than what I usually spend on shoes. Um, a really good pair of knee boots, same thing, or ankle boots, whichever kind of boots you sort of like if you're a boot person, um, put the money out because they will last longer and you won't have to keep replacing them every year. Um, so those are things you should spend money on, a really great coat or jacket, uh, especially if you live in colder climes because quality really does matter. <laughs> so, you know, a coat or jacket. Um, and uh, if you do have to work every day and you work in an office type setting, you know, maybe put out the money for one really good pair of slacks and a blazer. Um, because getting stuff that actually fits you and is of good quality is sometimes difficult. However, I know that some of you are really working with a tight budget, either because you are newly out on your own. Um, you have just graduated from college and are in the job force and have no money and nothing but student loans to pay. Um, or maybe you are newly in college or have been in college a little while. Say you're getting ready to do your student teaching or you're interning somewhere and you need a more professional wardrobe, but you have no money. Um, or maybe you're just a little bit older like I am and would like a few nice pieces, but you know, usually you end up spending your money on your kids or your husband, or somebody that is not you. You guys do this. I know this. Moms are always like that. So um, here are some extra tips. Um, investigate the town you live in. There is probably a tailor or a seamstress or somebody that does alterations. This is a wonderful thing. It does not cost that much to get something altered. It really doesn't. And an alteration can really help make something that you bought off the rack for not a lot of money look like something that was made for you, or as they bespoke, as they call it in the, uh, the lingo. But um, it can really fit you. Um, now, this is specifically for things like jacket, slacks, something like that. Um, go to the thrift store. Seriously, go to the thrift store. Don't worry about something being too big because that can be fixed. If it's too small, it's too small. But if it's just a little too big or doesn't fit quite right, you can alter it or have it altered so that it can fit you. Which brings me to another point. Learn to sew. You really need to learn how to sew. You can hem pants. You can fix any buttons that happen to pop off because buttons do pop off. Uh, a tear in a seam. You can fix it yourself, which means that at the thrift stores, just because something has a busted seam doesn't mean that you can't buy it for $2. Uh, 
and then fix it yourself. Or even if you're in a department store like Macy's or some such, you can take it up, whatever you like, up to the counter and go, oh, this is torn. Can I get a discount? Most of the time they'll give you a discount because they're just going to chuck it, but they'll sell it to you for less. You take it home, you fix it yourself. Learning to sew is a great thing. If you can get your hands on a sewing machine, even better. And you can. Those same thrift stores where they have clothes, Salvation Army, the Goodwill, things like that. A lot of times people will donate sewing machines. And there's nothing wrong with the sewing machine. It's perfectly fine. You may have to order some bobbins online um, or some such. But seriously, pick up a sewing machine. Um, I got mine at Walmart. It was originally a hundred and some dollars, but I got it on sale for $39.99. It was $40 and it's well worth the money. Um, I have bought mini tops that were kind of boxy and not great. And then I just put them on my own body inside out, put pins up the side so that it'll fit me right. Take it off, sew it up, cut off the excess, flip it right side out. The shirt was made for me. Um, learning to sew is very valuable. You can do this. It's not that hard. Um, what else? Woolite is your friend. Okay, so I am notorious for buying dresses that cost $15 or less. I can't help it. Ross Dress for Less, uh, Burlington, thrift stores, of course, um, and uh, like the Walmart, Sam's Club, they'll have $14, $15 dresses, right? I buy those. Now, here's the thing. When you buy a dress that is that cheap, it is usually cheap for a few reasons. One, it was not made in the USA. It was made in some other country, usually China, Indonesia, India, someplace else. It was assembled someplace else in some sort of factory somewhere. Um, hopefully not one with children working the machines. I think they're probably doing away with that now, but probably someplace where people are getting paid very much money because this dress cost me $15. That also means that the fabric that it's made of is probably not very good fabric, which means a few washings, the seams are going to rip, the fabric's going to pill, and it's going to look like a $15 dress. It doesn't have to because you know how to sew. So if some of the seams do happen to pop, you can fix them and you can keep that fabric from pilling by using the gentle cycle on your washing machine and woolite. Yes, woolite costs a little bit more than, you know, generic soap powders or laundry detergent. Um, but save all of your nice things that were really cheap that you need to keep looking nice. Wash them in gentle cycle in wool light and then hang them up to dry them. I swear to God, this will keep your clothes nicer for longer because they're not having to go through the dryer as often. That really saves a lot of wear and tear. It's kind of like your hair. By now, you also know you should be washing things in cold, right? Never wash anything in hot water unless it's, you know, white socks, undershirts, Things like that, you can wash in hot water. But any of your clothes, wash them all in cold water. It it saves them a lot of wear and tear. Um, let's see. So I covered wool light. I told you to learn to show. I told you you need to go to thrift, stop, uh, thrift stores um, and to hang things dry. This will save all of your cheap clothes. <laughs> there is one more thing. Thing, one more tip I can give you, uh, my ladies that are trying to work that professional wardrobe. Um, dry cleaning costs a lot of money. Um, it doesn't seem like it does. When you have to get your stuff dry cleans a lot, uh, it kind of sucks. Now, um, a lot of things that say dry clean only, you can usually get by with washing them on gentle cycle with woolite and hanging them to dry. Uh, but not everything. Um, and you don't want to ruin something, especially if it is more expensive. My biggest thing is that if it says dry clean only, hang it back up and you don't want it. Seriously. Nobody's got time for dry cleaning in their life. 
However, I know some of you do have some dry clean only. So here's the thing. And it's not just your dry cleaning. This would be any of your uh, clothes, period. So say you're just like going out for a brunch or a lunch or whatever. Or like when I was, when I did my, um, my student teaching, you know, I had my teacher clothes. So what I would do is I would get up, I would get dressed, I would put on my, my appropriate work clothes, I would go do the thing. And as soon as I got back, I changed out of that stuff and I hung it right back up and put it right back in the closet. It wasn't dirty. I didn't do anything. I wasn't out wrestling in the mud in those clothes. I could get another wear out of them or two or three before they needed to be dry cleaned. <laughs> And there is no shame in that. I do this now. If I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going out and about, I get dressed in my real clothes. I go out and do my thing. As soon as I get home, all that stuff, I take it off, I hang it back up, and I put my pajamas back on. Because you know what will survive 10,000 times through the washer and dryer? Your jammies. Who cares what your pajamas look like? If you're staying home and not going anywhere, that's what you should have on. Comfortable clothes. This also includes sweatpants, yoga pants, whatever. The stuff you usually don't wear out of the house that you just kind of lounge, loungewear. Let's call it that loungewear. When you are home, be in your loungewear. Your loungewear can be fabulous. You can have like the little hoodies and pants that match. That's fine. But it's going to survive a lot more washings than pretty much any of your classy, I'm leaving the house, these are real clothes, clothes. So yes, when you leave the house, put on real clothes. As soon as you are back in your house, take those real clothes off and put on your loungewear because it will save you so much time. To freshen up, that's why they made Febreze. I'm just saying. Alrighty, I hope you have enjoyed these tips to get more longevity out of your cheap stuff. Um, I have a lot of cheap stuff and I have some dresses that I have had for many years that still look new because I deploy the wool light, I hang them up, I don't care that they cost $10, I treat them like they cost $100 and then they will last as long as something that actually did cost $100. Um, any hoodles, there we go. Uh, please let me know if you have any money saving tips. <laughs> When it comes to your professional wardrobe um, and trying to make a dollar stretch when it comes to that kind of thing, because, yeah, stuff can get pretty expensive. Um, yeah. So uh, I will see you all. Um, next week is our week off. So I will see you the week after that. Uh, the tree will be up by then. Hopefully um, <laughs> I get it up and maybe we'll have the tree reveal. Before then, we shall see. Um, maybe not. <laughs> it depends on how much I get done next week. But uh, yes. So uh, there we go. All right. Um, let me know. Let me know any of your money saving tips. I think I said that. See? Brain fog. All righty, guys. Um, I will see you in a little over a week. <laughs> Have a great weekend, and I hope next week is awesome for you, too. Alrighty. I love you guys. Bye.